Asus has tried repeatedly to secure itself in being an established name in the smartphone world, but even through it all, they've yet to make any sort of headway, failing to generate any sort of meaningful interest from consumers. However, it seems as though things are changing with the arrival of the Asus Zenfone 2, a phablet S size smartphone that's priced aggressively for as low as $199 outright. Hey guys, John V from Phone Arena, and you're watching our video review of the Asus Zenfone 2. By just looking at the Zenfone 2, one could presume it's a premium thing just because of the brushed metallic-like finish with its casing. When it's actually held in the hand, however, it becomes evidently clear that it's nothing more than a plastic thing. Aesthetically, the design kind of reminds us of the style employed by LG's flagship G-Line, the LG G2 to be exact. It's made more obvious by how the volume controls are placed on the back of the phone. At the end of the day, the Zenfone 2's design is still typical of past Asus phones, so don't find it as enthralling as, say, something like the Alcatel One Touch Idol 3. The Zenfone 2's fashion with a 5.5 inch 1080x1920 IPS LCD display with Gorilla Glass 3 layered on top for protection. Now, much like the other 5.5 inches with 1080p resolution, it's more than sound with its detail and sharpness. Now, diving deeper into the display's other characteristics, it kind of exudes a colder tone due to its color temperature of 7622 Kelvin. In addition, its 2.8 gamma value tells us various shades of gray appear darker than they are intended. Even though it doesn't hit all the target values in the sRGB color chart, it's still not as saturated as some other displays, nor is it blinding as like some of the other displays with its 442 nit luminance. All told, the display is pretty ordinary by the looks of it. No doubt, it gets the job done, but it kind of lacks the characteristics to really command our attention. Impressively, for something regarded as an entry-level offering, the latest ASUS Zen UI experience is rich with features, personalization, and security. From the get-go though, some people might feel a bit overwhelmed trying to get around. That's just because there's just so much to do and remember. You have rich personalization with its downloadable themes, then you have the various Zen Motion functions, and of course, there's, this, there's Lollipop staple features. We will add though that we appreciate that it retains Lollipop's multi-user feature. Incredibly powerful and highly customizable, this latest Zen UI experience is no doubt accompanied with all the bells and whistles to satisfy power users. It's just lacking in the enhanced multitasking department. The Zenfone 2 might be thought of as a small blip in the greater scheme of things, but it's actually notable for the fact that it's powered by a 64-bit quad-core 2.3 GHz Intel Atom Z3580 processor coupled with the PowerVR 6430 GPU. And oh yeah, it's the first smartphone to offer a whopping 4GB of dual-channel DDR3 RAM. It's more than capable to handle the simple stuff with ease, but for more processor-intensive operations, such as gaming, it doesn't have the fluid high frame rates we tend to see in high-end phones. The camera is always one hotly sought out feature for anyone. So with that, Asus outfits the Zenfone 2 with a 13 megapixel Pixel Master rear camera, which features a Toshiba sensor, an f2.0 aperture 5 element Largan lens, and a dual LED real tone flash. And if that's not enough for you, the front camera receives its share of love because it's a wide angle 5 megapixel snapper with an f2.0 aperture lens. Now, we've liked Asus's camera app on its other devices, but for the Zen 2, they've taken it up a notch by including a deep set of shooting modes and a full manual mode as well, with the ability to set the shutter speed too. Other notable things about the camera app include its low light mode, a beautification mode, depth of field, and much more. Now, hardcore shutter buffs will no doubt be impressed by the vast options and controls it has to offer. We spent a long time using the camera intimately. While its quality under the automatic setting isn't a home run, it's nonetheless still effective to handle the ideal shooting conditions with enough detail, sharpness, and natural colors. However, the camera tends to favor an over-sharpened composition. While under low light, it's prone to blurring and the usual softer details. Out of everything though, we're most impressed by its HDR mode, since highlights and shadows are balanced properly to give the photo a nice and pleasant contrast. Its 1080p video recording performance falls into pretty much the same boat, seeing that it's reasonable looking when the conditions are ideal, such as outdoor scenery that's brightly lit. Still, details are a bit more subdued looking, and under lower light, the biggest problem is this lower frame rate capture of the camera. 
The new Zen UI music player doesn't have much of a commanding presence, especially when it's pretty ordinary with its presentation and function. The handset's internal speaker emits an output of 72.7 decibels, which is pretty decent, but its quality sounds extremely thin and light. In combating that, the quality can be enhanced by enabling any of the audio wizard options. There's no complaint about its video watching experience considering it has an ample sized screen and a smooth performance to go along with it. And as we've said previously, it's lacking in the multitasking department, so don't expect to be watching a video and doing something else simultaneously. Sure, the earpiece is loud enough to make out voices in noisy conditions, but there's a little bit of a robotic tone that accompanies voices. While they're down the line, our callers can still make us out audibly, but they mention it's a little bit on the subdued side. Packing a 3000 milliamp hour battery, it earns good marks from us. That's probably because it's above average in regards to other phones in its caliber, giving us well over a full day of normal usage from a full charge. In our battery benchmark test alone, it achieves a respectable mark of 7 hours and 34 minutes. It's very good, but we're more at a loss for words with its 58 minutes of charging time. That's just insanely fast for the bundled charger. Asus is smart for attacking the entry-level segment of the market, as opposed to breaking into the high end, which means tangling against some of the juggernauts floating about right now. After spending an intimate time with the Zenfone 2, we're pretty confident that this is the kind of phone that grows on you over time. Factoring in its $299 outright pricing for the 64GB version or $200 for the 16GB one, it's undoubtedly a competitive offering that's taking it straight to the hearts of its competitors a cautious yet necessary move for them to garner interest from consumers.